According to the National Sustainable Agriculture Information Service, previously known as ATRA, the most important issue related to irrigation in sustainable nursery production is the runoff water containing fertilizers and pesticides. Consequently, more emphasis is placed on treating runoff to minimize these contaminants before nurseries release water to the environment. Well, we're irrigating about 90 acres of land. All the water in the nursery from rain and irrigation flows into channels that are then directed down to this pond. The water doesn't go directly in the pond. It goes through a man-made swamp that we created. It's important to think about the design of your beds if you're gonna to try to capture all your water. Here we have beds that all run from west to east and also they're concave, so all the water will run into the center of the bed. It comes down the field to the west end. It's all collected in a swale. The swales that we have created are all lined with plastic first and then ground cloth to keep the plastic from biodegrading. And the water goes through culverts under roads, winds up in the swamp, and we feel that the natural vegetation helps pull out any herbicides or fertilizers before it gets into the pond. Some nurseries have developed sophisticated capture systems for collecting and purifying water. In Cairo, Georgia, Monrovia Nursery collects runoff from irrigation and rainfall through a series of channels and ponds for future use in the nursery or for treating the effluent or used water before discharging it from the nursery site. Originally the concept was that we had deep water cells for the uh, removal of the, of the uh, nutrients primarily by the bacteria and the anaerobic conditions and then that water would in turn move over to shallow cells, more aerobic uh, cells and uh, before the water actually moved out of the constructed wetlands. But what we found was that uh, going strictly with deep water cells was, uh, was the right choice and we maximized the total uh, area in terms of its water handling capacity and its ability to, uh, to polish the, uh, the irrigation water that's running through them. Uh, so this cells that you see here are three separate cells of deep water uh, cells, one, uh, one right behind the other that uh, gravitationally the water flows through these cells with a, with a three to five day residency in order to allow that the, uh, the microorganisms in the cells to do the uh, reduction process that uh, they're in place for. Uh, and that has worked out very well. Research is also progressing on small scale, low tech, affordable, but effective methods for removing nutrients from runoff. Bioretention through rain garden systems is a runoff management strategy designed to capture and filter the surface runoff by slowing the flow and promoting plant root uptake of contaminants. In 2008, a bioretention rain garden using wetland plants was installed at a container plant nursery in North Florida. The runoff that is being generated from this production bed is, being, is, is covering an area that's about 18,000 square feet and it generates roughly about 1,500 gallons of runoff. And here we're taking into consideration the water that misses the pot and the water that actually leaches out of the pot. The bioretention rain garden absorbed significant amounts of phosphate and nitrogen from runoff. As a result of this experiment, the estimated cost to install a bioretention rain garden was less than $5 per square foot. Depending on the size of the irrigated area and the bioretention basin, such systems have a large capacity for water storage and nutrient absorption by plants. As we all know, water is an essential resource for nursery production. The long-term sustainability and success of nurseries of all sizes can only be enhanced by efficient irrigation techniques and runoff treatment. To find additional information, please refer to this document and others which are available on the project website.